Hi, everybody. This is Mark Deason, uh, with, and I'm bringing you a lecture on a opening system to uh, to fight one uh, D4 by White, uh, an opening system for Black against one uh, D4. The opening system I'm going to recommend is the note boom variation of the Slav defense. The note boom uh, variation is named after a Dutch player, Daniel Noteboom, who uh, died at a very young age of 21, and he uh, regularly essayed this variation. Uh, let me quickly show you what variation we're talking about. Uh, we're talking about the queen pawn openings. Uh, white, black can play e6 or c6 here. A lot of the players that play the note boom play e6 first. Uh, that gives white the option to play the exchange queen's gambit, but with a little less force than than uh, in some other poss possible variations. But anyway, uh, the note boom variation is characterized by this uh, structure we have on the board here. So black first plays uh, d5, then he plays e6, then he plays c6. Now, uh, this has several uh, good features to it, this note boom variation. I have uh, the names of some players of a game we're going to review, but I'm talking about the opening in general uh, at this point. Uh, the, the note boom itself is when white plays knight f3, black plays d takes c4. And... The idea of the opening is that while white spends time regaining the pawn, black gets active uh, piece play and perhaps some pass pawns on the queen side. That's the basic. So this is the basic starting position of the of the note boom variation, and uh, it's been very successful for black. It's one of those openings where the statistics are very favorable for black if you're a a database hound, and you want to, and you're a, a type of player that is really interested in statistics. You'll find that the statistics for the note boom are, are excellent. Uh, if I can add my own personal experience, I tend to do well with black with a note boom, and I tend to do not so well with white. Uh, maybe I shouldn't be saying that, but uh, that's the truth. And uh, so the, the, that's the variation we're going to be examining tonight. Uh, the note boom is a uh, variation of the Slav defense. Uh, it, technically, it's considered to be a variation of the Slav defense on the Queen's Gambit, although a lot of, probably the majority of the people that play the note boom play e6 uh, first. But let's, uh, I, I should also mention that note boom is, uh, Daniel note boom got his name attached to the variation. Uh, but there's another, uh, an Englishman, uh, Gerald a Abrams, that played the variation early on. In the 1990s, uh, a bunch of strong players uh, started to to try their uh, try their hand at the note boom and reinvigorated the whole system. And uh, I think that has a lot to do with its uh, current popularity. But I wanted to go ahead and just look at a game. Uh, here from 1992 between Komayakov and Sorokin. And uh, I think this is rather typical uh, of the of the Nobum variation, so that's why I think we can we can go over it. It should be helpful in explaining the variation. So this game is from 1992. So once again, we see black play e6 first as opposed to to c6, it really doesn't matter. You can, if you're a uh, player that likes a slav, you could easily play c6 and then play e6. Both are f both moves uh, are fine. It, if re with respect to entering the note boom, white plays knight f3 and now c6. And now, what are some of the what are some of the other advantages of the note boom? Well, first of all. If white wants to sidestep the discussion of the note boom variation, go into the exchange queen's gambit, notice that uh, bishop g5 is not yet pinning anything because there's not a knight on f6. So 
in in my way of looking at it, this is an improved black has improved possibilities when it comes to the exchange queen's gambit. That's one aspect of the no boom I like for black. And the other aspect I like for black is if I'll just uh, throw out a move for illustration purposes that wasn't played in the game. What if white plays passively or something? Black can change his mind and play uh, uh, basically some kind of Stonewall Dutch. And uh, that's a very aggressive and very interesting system. And uh, black plays knight f6 and bishop d6. And the bishop might even have, white, uh, black's white squared bishop may even have to make a long journey like e7 to e8 to h5 or b6 to bishop b7. You know, it might take a while to activate the uh, black's uh, so-called bad bishop, but uh, it is achievable. And uh, I like I like both aspects of that. Uh, I like the fact that there's the exchange queen's gambit has less bite to it, and I like the fact that I can go into the Stonewall Dutch if I under certain conditions. But let's continue with the game, uh, which actually features the no boom at proper. White continues development, and black takes the pawn. So here's the starting point for the no boom variation. And now we see what typically happens. White goes to work to regain the pawn and maintain, uh, you know, while maintaining a very impressive center. Black plays b5. White attacks the black pawn structure. Now bishop b4, a key move to uh, pin the knight and uh, prevent white from regaining the pawn. White breaks the pin. And now black has two moves, a5 and bishop b7. They tend to transpose. Uh, it's really hard to pick between the two. They're, they're rather uh, of equal value. There are some minor subtleties uh, uh, comparing the two, but uh, nothing that major. In any, in this, in any case, uh, in this game, black tries a5, so we're still following the quote-unquote main line of the note boom. But notice that white has not regained his pawn yet. Pawn takes pawn. Now black trades on c3. Now the bishop does achieve a, you know an apparently fairly satisfactory development on c3. The black takes on b5, and once again, the pawn has not been regained. So now white plays b3, so white is now finally in a position where he's going to regain the pawn. This is the exact idea of the note boom, that white goes through all these contortions to regain the pawn, but in the meantime, black gets a very impressive set of passive pawns on the queen side and very active pieces.